Hi guys, welcome to my channel and finally we are filming a regular video and it's not vlogmas. It is bittersweet for me because Christmas is over but I am excited to get back to my regular videos as well. I love being able to sit down and talk to you guys. So today I am talking about all my favorites for the year. I have a notebook because I know me and I tend to forget things. There's a chance that I'm still forgetting things, but I try to really list out and go product by product, type by type, and tell you guys what I really, really loved and what I reached for a lot. There are a few products in here that I've been using for maybe a couple of months. So I'm gonna start with skincare. I have a little bit of everything to show you, but it's just what really stood out to me. So first off, let's talk about makeup removal. I just repurchased this and I'm so happy that it's back in my life. I have two makeup removers that I really really love but if I had to had to had to narrow it down to one it would be this this is the Lancome Mill and Mousse it's a foaming cleansing makeup remover and this has honey in it this one is just perfection I put it on dry makeup massage it in and then rinse it away but you already feel so freaking clean when you use this but then you go into your cleanser to really cleanse your skin makeup removal like at its finest I also have to give a quick mention to the pharmacy green clean these are the two makeup removers that I really, really love. Anytime I use something else, I'm like, ugh. But if I had to pick one, this one's just amazing. One pump in the hands, it warms, it melts. It's just, it's so good. Glam Glow Super Mud and Super Cleanse. These two are what I reach for when I am having a breakout, when my pores are clogged, and it works for me and my skin type. Also, these don't dry me out. I'm already someone who's a little bit more dry, so I have to be careful that the products I'm using to help clear my skin aren't going to over dry my skin and give me more issues. Super Mud has been an absolute favorite for a very long time. I love the mask. I use it when I need it, and then I try to use it about once a week just to maintain my pores and exfoliate my skin. But then I was introduced to the Super Cleanse. I went through an entire tube of it without touching another cleanser. It was really a game changer for my skin. A few weeks into using this, I was noticing that right around the edge of my nose, which is an easy place to get clogged, I would have like a little bitty, I don't even know how to put this. It would look like maybe a whitehead or something, but you could actually just pull it right off. And it was like everything that was in my pores was being pulled to the surface using this cleanser consistently. It's so amazing. These are a stay for me when it comes to clogged pores and breakouts this is the other product that I reach for these are the Peter Thomas Roth max complexion correction pads these are simply just little bitty round towelettes you sweep them over the face and you're done it's a glycolic and salicylic blend it does have other ingredients too like aloe vera green tea that are good for your skin and will help to kind of soothe the aftermath of exfoliation if you will when I'm having texture bumps or I'm having hormonal breakouts this is another like go-to for me it depends on how my skin is feeling if I am getting a little bit oilier than normal the super mud is usually the way to go and then if I'm just experiencing like a lot of texture I go for these so good next this has been a staple for me for I don't know how long the Murad hydrating toner I do also like their essential C toner that one is very good as well but this is the one I reach for more often than not this one gives just that little instant hydration back into the skin after cleansing or especially after doing like a clay mask or a mud mask whatever it may be if you feel like your skin's gotten a little stripped this kind of gets it back to a balance and then you can go in with either an essence or a serum moisture whatever you're doing next you can also use these as setting spray which is really nice so if you're traveling you have a setting spray and a toner in one bottle and I actually like it as a setting spray right, one serum I want to talk about the Sunday Riley a plus this is the high dose retinoid I was using Luna for a while it's the blue tansy retinol oil that you can get from Sunday Riley but when I started using this I saw saw a really dramatic difference in my skin. When I'm using this serum consistently, I see my skin looking baby smooth. Fine lines are not as noticeable. I feel like this is just kind of like stopping my skin's aging process, or at least for now. I mean, granted, you can't really stop it forever, but when it comes to like slowing it down and signs of aging coming on more gracefully, I feel like this is the thing that has been working for me the most. It is a little bit strong, so 
be wary of that if you're very sensitive. My skin really loves it. I do require a good, nice hydration afterwards, but I really, really enjoyed it. As far as basic moisture goes, I actually don't have the product, but I love the Drunk Elephant Lala Retro. That one for me is just like the perfect combination of really creamy hydration. It gets my skin where it needs to go without being oily or greasy. I love the ingredients and it does have an oil base, so I feel like I'm really getting nourished. More hydrating products I want to talk about because I love hydration in multiple forms. I feel like that's when my skin is at its best, when I am maybe overdoing it on the steps. Some people would probably think so, but I don't care if it works for me, it works for me. First, an oil that I've been loving, and this is my second bottle of it, the Biosense 100% Squalane Oil. This one is made from sugar cane, and it's literally one ingredient. You can use this on your face, on your hair, anywhere on the body, literally for anything. I love it. Like, it's thin, it's lightweight, it hydrates the skin, but it does not feel heavy or greasy. It really sinks in. It's also a pretty thin oil, so if you're like, I don't want to fuss with an oil, or maybe you're thinking I'm too oily. This one is amazing. If you're in a Sephora, pump it onto your hands, massage it in, see what you think. I think it is so, so amazing and I'm really impressed with Biosense products overall. And finally, one product that has been a consistent staple for me no matter what I'm using is the Clinique Moisture Surge. A lot of people do use this as a moisturizer. When I worked for Clinique years and years ago, I was trained that this was a last step hydrator over moisturizer. That's how we were taught to use it, sell it, and I use it like that and I love it. If I were to use this on its own, hell no. My skin would be so dehydrated that I would produce a lot of oil. I'll use a serum followed by an oil and then put this over top to kind of seal everything in and I feel like the oil really penetrates my skin a little bit better and then you have this water-based hydration. It's kind of like a blanket over the skin that just holds everything in and if your skin is getting dehydrated, it'll pull it in as needed. There are people out there who are just truly oily no matter what they do and this may be a good option but I love love it as my last step. Really quick, what I've been using for a few months is the Nug. This is the Coco Shine Lip Balm. I found that for my lips, this one works really, really well. It is thinner in consistency, so I do feel the need to reapply after a couple of hours. It feels very comfortable on the lips. I can put it on throughout the day. It's easy to use. It's really good, clean ingredients. And this is what I've been using when my lips have been super dry and my lips are feeling really comfortable now. They're not over chapped like they were, so that's been working for me. And then finally, I wanna quickly mention Mention this one. I have only been using this for probably about a month, I would say, which I feel like is a decent enough time portion of the year, if you will, but it is relatively new. So this is the Kopari Starry Eye Balm. So this for me has been a real game changer in my under eye area. I get a lot of creasing. It's just the way my eye is shaped. My concealer creases, my makeup doesn't want to settle there very well. And with this, I feel like everything is really plump and hydrated and my concealer glides over top more easily. I don't see as much creasing. The powder doesn't look as dry under my eyes. Now this does obviously have coconut in it. Some people are not going to put coconut anywhere on their face. I'm fine with this in my eye area. I have no issues whatsoever. I'm putting it literally right where I need it. Now, if I were to slather this on my nose, I would probably get clogged pores. But in my eye area, it's so amazing. Let's talk about primers. I have a few that have been my favorites. I'm going to start with what I've been using the most. And you can tell like this poor Smashbox is empty. And I think this is my second bottle. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. It is primer and moisturizer. I will tell you though, I always use moisturizer first. I don't use this as a one step, but this does have hyaluronic acid and niacinamide. So it will help to get your skin plump, nice and hydrated before you go in with foundation. This is the perfect pair for a matte foundation for my skin. And then the other one I've been liking is the No Problem Priming Water. Now this one is the one that has toning water and essential oil. There is a bit more tackiness with this one versus the Smashbox. So if you want to feel that little tackiness and grip on the skin before you put on foundation, check this one out. I love it. I also really like the applicator. You may have seen me use this in Instagram videos. You can do a little droplet if you want. It's nice because it does have an oil in it, but it's very, very light and thin, but it gives that like supple hydration, which I really, really like. You got a little tackiness there, but not too much. And I've been using this to fill in my pores. This is the Clean Slate Timeless Smoothing Primer from Tarte. So this one you can see, I still have a lot of it. I go in with the tiniest little bit just over my nose area and right into the cheeks right here. Sometimes a little on my chin, but only where I have 
pores that I feel like are going to be noticeable under my makeup. I'll smooth it there. But I don't use this one all over. I don't feel like I need it. I just put it where... I want my pores to be smoother. I'm going to show you my favorite fragrance. So I've been wearing a By the Fireplace by Replica. Now I just got this bottle recently, but I have loved this fragrance for a couple of years now. I just got to spray some one. Mm. It is the perfect winter fragrance. Like I will wear this until it becomes really too warm to wear it, or at least in my opinion, you can wear it year round obviously, but it's a very warm scent. It smells a little bit smoky at first, but the kitties are playing with their Christmas toys if you hear that. It warms to a really sweet fragrance and I just love the way it smells on me. It's like warm and cozy and everything that's good. So let's talk about foundations. Now this is the area where I probably have too many recommendations. The ones that I initially picked out, I was like, you know what, these are the ones I've worn all year. And then I started to feel like, okay, but wait, I love this one, I love this one. Let me start with these two and then I'll get into the wrist. First, you guys have heard me rave about this over and over again. It's the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. I've been using L40 most recently, but there's a lot of colors from that range I can make work. They do have a nice range, especially for drugstore, a really, really good range. So this is the only matte foundation in my recommendations, and that is because it looks matte, it stays on well, but it doesn't feel dry to my skin. And also, I feel like you can get a really nice full coverage from this. You just can't beat it for the price like every drugstore one that I've tried if it's matte it's too dry and too cakey or if it's too luminous it's not enough coverage this is just like the right little fix and if you want an affordable foundation try out the covergirl one and I'm really excited for the new one that they're launching too that's a little bit more radiant the other one that I've been loving is the NARS natural radiant longwear foundation if I had to pick one and only one it would be this one amazing coverage it gives a radiant finish it doesn't look cakey it's just really really good. NARS is more expensive but I would still have to pick this as my favorite. So two that I've been using pretty much throughout the year. I actually find these to be pretty similar. So the Bare Minerals Fresh Face Liquid Foundation is the one you can use the app to get matched to. I got this from Influencer. My bottle is like completely kicked. I don't know if you can see it but I can see straight through it. The app matched me to the best match I have ever had. Literally this color right here, I am, I need to be on the hunt for other things that are exactly this color. So if I could have like, okay, this is your color and we'll match everything else to you. This would be the closest match ever. And it's crazy that the app did that for me. Also the foundation is truly fresh face. It's about a medium coverage. I can build it up, but it is not complete opaque coverage on the skin. I don't really want that though. I'm not looking for it. It's fine. I do not want to go to a store and you want a medium, breathable, really beautiful finish. It's very natural. Download the app, check it out. You can get matched and it's specifically customized for you. So I love that. The Bobbi Brown one I've used a few times and every time I pick this up, I'm like, oh my God, why don't I wear this more? That's why I have it on today. This is the skin foundation, just the regular. I can't believe this does not crease in my smile lines. Like literally wearing it the other day, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not creasing. It flexes with your skin. It's so nice. I haven't worn it a hundred times like I have some other foundations, but every time I use this, I'm like, oh my God, this should be my holy grail. So I do want to just mention that one. It is, of course, a little bit higher end, but it's really beautiful. The Neutrogena is the last one I'm going to mention. As you guys saw, I have been posting a lot about this on Instagram, but I just want to let you guys know if you were like, hmm, I wonder if she means it. I really, really like it. I think this is probably next to the CoverGirl. This is probably my other favorite drugstore foundation. I've worn it a few different times to, you know, film and take pictures, but I've worn it several other times and I really like it. It's SPF 20. It gives a natural finish. This one does crease in my smile lines a bit, but it creases about as much as every other foundation out there, which is always always a problem for me. So I feel like this one's really, really on par with some higher end foundations. It's called Healthy Skin, but I wouldn't think of this as like a very radiant foundation. It's kind of like the natural finish, but it also wears a really long time on me. So I love that one. I do want to mention that I love the Magic Star Concealer. I cannot put it down. I love this concealer. It is not 
ultra full coverage in my opinion but you can definitely build it and get it there it's just really really good though that one doesn't crease under my eyes i love it as an eyeshadow base so i had to mention that one and then my actual other favorite is a drugstore one which is the covergirl true blend undercover i was really really surprised to see that this was an amazing concealer i feel like this is the dupe for shape tape for me and yes i still love shape tape but i've honestly been trying to find other ones that i like so this one just like shape tape for me it's just slightly dry that's the only downside i can find but again i'm dry under the eyes so take that with a big old grain of salt but i really love this one it's amazing coverage you can definitely use it as an eye base if you want to sculpt your face you can get one to contour with if you'd like i love that one one makeup tool i want to tell you guys about you've seen me talk about this and i'm sure you've seen me use it on instagram this is the stands out beauty sponge it's like the memory foam one that you may have seen some people post about i use this every single time i do my makeup even if i use a beauty blender and you're probably like why I love this one for powders on days when I use a beauty blender I reach for this for my powders because I have a tendency for whatever reason when I'm using my beauty blender I'll go in my creams I'll blend out my creams I'll dip it into the powder and then realize that my under eye concealer has already creased a little bit because I haven't set it yet and then I'm like oh let me twist it because you don't want to you know smooth out those lines with powder on your sponge because it's just gonna set it does that make sense like I've done this over and over again but with this one you've got so many angles on this sponge there's always enough room for you to use you know just liquids on this side and then powders on this side but I love using the big side specifically to really get in the inner corner you can also use this triangular side and get in there as well you can see it's really really loved it needs a good washing but you can also use this completely dry <laughs> yes i know that sounds crazy i still prefer to wet it if i have the time i think because i'm just so used to it but you can use this dry so if you were on the go a lot and you need a sponge to put on your foundation you can pick this up you do want to break it in and use it wet a few times first but after that you are good to go so i really love these i always have them linked down below it is an affiliate link just so you guys know i want to be really upfront about that but i love it i use it all the time so the two setting sprays that i have been reaching for the most and you can see because I have literally used this one up. Can you see how low it is? This is the Algenus Splash Hydrating Setting Mist. I love the way that this melts my powder into my foundation. It's like second skin the moment that I spray this on. This is some good, good stuff. And it's also really hydrating to the skin. I can feel like if my foundation and powder and all is feeling a little bit too dry, I always reach for that one because it will kind of like reset my skin back to like a natural state. That way I'm not feeling too dry. The other one is the Milk Makeup up blur spray so this one is kind of funny you have got to shake this one really really well it literally sets everything in place and it will not move it's kind of like for me like all nighter 2.0 and I still love all nighter I bought a giant one I still love it so so much and the main reason I did is because I hate this tiny bottle I feel like they should make this so much bigger it's only 2.3 ounces and so I've gone through it and repurchased it and I don't like repurchasing it a lot I don't know Maybe that's just me being fussy, but you know, there's a lot of options out there. I actually feel my, my makeup being set. Does that make sense? Like I feel everything kind of just snap together if you will. And I'm like, oh, my makeup is not going anywhere. I would just like for them to make it in a bigger bottle. When it first came out, I think they wanted $28 for this. And I was like, no, but they have since lowered the price. I would just like for them to make a bigger bottle. That's my only complaint is I love it so much, I want more of it. My ultimate favorite this year has been the Pretty Vulgar Powder and Setting Powder. I have used it over and over and over and over again. This lid is so filthy because I have consistently just like put powder, sponges everywhere. This guy has been used a lot this year. I love it for under eye, I love it for face. I use this for both and that's one of the reasons why I like it. Personally, I like a setting powder I can use everywhere. And for me, I know everybody loves Laura Mercier. That was just a little bit dry for me, I have to say that. So I prefer this one. I don't feel like my skin gets too dry with it. It's just really, really nice. Also a quick nod to the Jeffree Star Magic Star Setting Powder. I feel like the concealer and setting powder was just like a really, really bomb formula. It's very finely milled. I love this under the eye. I would just prefer no fragrance. That's just me personally because I do like, whew, I smell it and you're like breathing it in. It makes you realize, however, how much you really breathe powders in because you're like, oh God, it's in my nose. And then you're like, wow, maybe I need to 
you know, take a time out. Maybe not use so much powder. Maybe stop breathing when I'm setting my face. But I got the shade Rose and I really do like this powder. It has been great for my under eye. I wanted to pick a collection that I thought was the most appealing to me. That was without a doubt the MAC Electric Wonder Collection. Everything about this collection appealed to me so much. First of all, the packaging is on another level. Pink, gold, marble, little gray in there. It is a beautiful combination. The eyeshadows were really, really beautiful. I have a bronzer and an iridescent powder that I absolutely love. And then there were also beautiful, beautiful lip colors. And I think we can all agree MAC lipsticks are probably some of the best just regular lipsticks out there. Just wanted to give like a shout out because I thought it was so beautifully done. I feel like so many collections come out now and it's just to make a sale. That very well could have been a collection that was just pretty packaging and nothing else. And I feel like a lot of brands are doing that because it's a quick buck. But the quality of that collection was also outstanding. In a minute, we're gonna continue with all the fun stuff. Bronzers, blushes, highlights, contour, liners. Eyeshadows, lips. There's so much still to talk about. So let's do it right now. And I'm gonna tell you really quick about two products that I love that are apparently either discontinued or very hard to get your hands on. I fell in love with a couple things and now you can't really get them. Like I can still use these, but obviously I want stuff on my channel that you guys can get. So the first one is the Milani Contour and Highlight. So this is the Cream Liquid Duo. I honestly was only using the stick contour and you can see like it is down to a nub. I really like this one. It was just the right shade, cool enough without looking too gray. I really, really enjoy it. Obviously I can still use this up, but I wanna find a replacement for that. I thought it was really good though. Like it's not too strong and too pigmented. Very easy to blend. I like it a lot. And then the Naked Skin Shape Shifter. You can now find these I think at TJ Maxx, but I was using the powders and the cream products on the other side. I really enjoyed this. The cream contour was really nice. You had both and I love that it's like divided by a mirror too so you're not getting a ton of powder in the creams. I don't know why this wasn't a big deal. If you don't mind that it's not a current product and you see this at TJ Maxx, I would recommend it. But I have the light medium shift. There is a deeper one as well. I keep seeing the deeper one at TJ Maxx. I haven't seen this one. I really like those products. I use them a lot this year and I'm sad to see them go. And then the products that I'm loving for bronzing and contouring that you can still get. First, we'll talk about the really expensive one. This is the Marc Jacobs 104 Tantastic Omega Bronze, a giant bronzer, and it looks like I've barely touched this, but you can actually see I have begun to hit pan. It's this tiny little mark in the middle where I've started to hit pan, but this one is a really good, beautiful, beautiful bronze. It still looks really nice even though it is you know, getting a little worse for wear. This one is on the fairer side. They do have a deeper one as well. I feel like they could probably have another bronzer that was even deeper. I feel like that would really complement what they have already, but I love this one. It blends like a dream. It smells like coconut. The other one that I've really finally gotten into is the Hula Light. The formula of this one is super, super nice. I also love now that they have an entire color range and I feel like they have a really decent color range for bronzers. So we've got the light, regular. I think there's a caramel and a toasted. I think that's all the shades, but I'm not sure. They have four or five shades though. I really, really love the formula of this. And then this one is a really affordable one. This is the Sephora Colorful Contour. I have a second chance which is number 35. This looks like it might be a little bit deep for me but I promise this is a great like taupey kind of contour. After I've bronzed everywhere I go in with this to create a specific shadow so where I want it to look like my cheek is really chiseled or I really want to chisel out the jawline this really looks like a good shadow. Not too brown, not too gray. I really love it. Right, and if I'm being 100% honest about blush, the only things that I reach for all the time are Milani Rose Powder Blushes. I love this one, Tea Rose, so much that I really need to go buy another one. The pan is like flattened out. You can still see some of the rose print, but you don't need a lot of these for the pigmentation. But I actually wanna go pick up another one of these. And then I also really like Coral Cove for a bright, peachier blush. I like this one more in like spring and summertime. And then the tea rose I use year round. It's just a little bit more of a muted pink with just a hint of neutral to it. But I love these. They're affordable, but they feel like high-end blushes to me. And I love that fact. 
And when it comes to highlight, if I had to pick just one or two, it would be Gerard Cosmetics and Ofra. So the Gerard one is probably my number one most used one, and I have the shade Grace. I think that their star powders are absolutely stunning. You can see the glow on that, even though it's like loaded up with product. The shade is gold without being yellow and too much for my fair complexion. They have a lot of colors, and the one thing that I love most about the formula is that it does not emphasize texture on the skin. No matter what highlight you use, you're gonna see if you have texture. You are highlighting a feature. So of course it can emphasize texture, but this one is maybe the smoothest formula that I have seen in a highlight, at least for my skin. I love them so much. The formula of Ofra highlights I really, really love. They are a bit more blinding. I grabbed all of the lights because I really like this one but I just mean in general the formula is so so good so just as an example this has four shades basically in one and these are beautiful beautiful highlights okay let's talk brows for a minute I have two products that no matter what I try I always go back to these I try something and they don't quite live up to it I basically do my brows in two ways today I have on my quick and easy brow which I typically use the benefit goof proof brow pencil. You can really do this with almost any brow pencil and get this look, but I like this one for one specific reason. It is the shape of the brow pencil. So this one has almost like a triangular tip. Hopefully you guys can see that, but it's a little bit bigger at the base and then it comes to a point. The nice thing about this is because it's in the slant, in the package that way, you always have a little bit of a point. It may not be super, super sharp, but you always have some precision. So what I typically do is use the flat side and I'll just go up through the brow like this. Once I've done that, it's kind of like whittled the pencil down to where it's a little sharper at the tip and I will flip it up so the top of the triangle is here and then do hair like strokes in the front. This is probably the fastest brow in my arsenal of brow products. I do like some others, but when it really came down to what I love for the year, this was it because if I was in a hurry, I knew that I needed to grab this in order to get out the door really quickly. If you have trouble with brows or if you want something super quick and easy, I love this one. Now, every time that I get a ton of compliments on my brows, it's when I'm wearing Dip Brow and it's no surprise that this is one of my favorites. I think it's time for me to get a new one. It is like way, way down into the jar. But the great thing about this is they last forever. The only thing with this one is I know it's going to take me a bit longer so I use two brushes. I use a regular angled brow brush with a spoolie on the other end. I use that one to really just fill in the majority of my brow and then I use a tiny little brush. This little brush is one of my favorite things ever. This is the Morphe E35. This is the tiniest little brush you have ever seen. It's super, super small. The very last thing that I do is do little hair strokes. And when I use this brush with Dip Brow, it's like the perfect combination. And people think I have like perfect brows. And I kind of like to do in between like not a full like fleeky brow, but also not completely natural either. Like I want it to look structured, but then wispy at the front. It's just the way that I like them. If I have the time, this is what I do. Ever since I got this Hank and Henry Slick With It liner, nothing quite compares to this one. This Hank and Henry just cannot be beat. And I don't mind narrowing it down to just one product in this category because this liquid liner is amazing. I absolutely love it. I have the shade Blickety Black. This one is super black, super pigmented. It has a great brush that's very long and lengthy. I kind of like that. It's got the right amount of flexibility in the brush tip. I I find as I really narrow down what I enjoy that I tend to prefer brush tip liners over felt. That's just me personally. Really impressed with Hank and Henry. I got mystery boxes and I fell in love with this liner. And then we have mascaras. So I have three mascaras that I have really, really, really been loving and I am going to rank these. I'm going to rank this one number one because not only is it amazing, but it's under $10. It's the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. If I had to pick one mascara, it would be this. Like nine times out of 10, I would grab this because I truly, truly enjoyed it. No flaking no smudging my lashes are full my lashes are long I usually have people ask me when I wear this one if I have on false lashes or real lashes like I think you could mistake them for like a more natural false lash which is crazy this mascara is amazing I think you can get this for around seven bucks and it's so so good my second choice I actually don't have the packaging anymore because I used it until it was literally dry the Dior show iconic overcurl that one has a curved brush which typically is not my go-to but it does give me a good bit of lift and curl which my lashes tend to want to just like 
hang there like this. They're literally like little T-Rex arms and they're just hanging there not doing a thing. Both of those mascaras give me lift and volume and curl but Dior Show is way more expensive so again I would go for the CoverGirl. The other one that I have really enjoyed is the Milk Kush Mascara. I love the way that this one glides on. I like the conditioning properties of this one as well. Almost moussey and consistency when you're putting it on and you can definitely build for some really good volume without it getting like thick and crunchy but a really really good one too especially if you want something to condition them then the milk would be a really good way to go as well but i want to quickly say that i have been so so impressed with the formula of the ColourPop bff cream gel liners these are so good i started out just getting one or two i wanted a white that would really stay in my waterline and believe it or not ColourPop is the one that does the best for me and the other day i wore like a lime green in the waterline i loved it so much that one is a new color for me so i just want to say the formula is outstanding it's definitely been one i've been reaching for throughout the year you can obviously use them anywhere that you want on the eye area but these bad boys are one of the few things that stay in my waterline and for whatever reason, like my waterline just rejects color, it throws it away. If you have that issue too, give the ColourPop ones a try. They're so affordable that it's so well worth it. I have to talk about the Stila Magnificent Metal Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows. Every brand seems to be coming out with their own form of liquid glitter. I feel like these were the OG and to me, nothing quite lives up to these. They do go on as a very liquidy formula and I wanna show you really quick, if you haven't seen these, they are outstandingly beautiful and it's not like a liner applicator like the Urban Decay where you have to like continue to like layer, layer, layer. You can literally do this, blend it a little bit over the edges if you want and you are done. So on a day where I want my eyes to really pop and be maybe a little bit more glamorous, I can put something in the crease, even just a bronzer, put this on the lid, blend it out with a finger or the brush and you're done. Like let it dry down and it is set. It also doesn't flake off badly like a lot of other liquid glitters out there and one thing that I found with some of the other formulas that I've tried is that they kind of want to gather especially if you have a little bit of a hooded eyelid they want to gather they want to get stuck they want to get clumpy but these for me last all day long I know a lot of brands have these now but I'm very loyal to the Stila ones not only because they're so beautiful because I feel like they really did it first with these. That wasn't much of a thing and now everybody's doing it. Eyeshadow palettes to me is a big, big category because obviously you're wearing different color eyeshadows or at least for me, I like to change up my colors all the time. I don't wanna go, you know, three days in a row wearing the same eyeshadow. That's just not my style. Now granted, if you're just a neutral gal and you want just your browns, that's totally understandable and I feel like that's more so the common way that people do it whereas I like love to wear weird Weird colors but I do have several things that I want to share with you that have been favorites throughout the year things that I've reached for a lot and I've been really really impressed with first I do have to say that Huda Beauty does some beautiful eyeshadow formulas I have loved the obsession palettes particularly the mauve has been one of my favorites I really enjoyed through the summer the neon obsessions palettes pigmented bright colors which is not always the case just a couple there to show you. Super pigmented. I have used these on countless like Instagram videos, things like that in pictures and they really stand out. They make like an impact. Even if you grab one of these, just to add a little bit in your inner corner or just to brighten up the lower lash line. They're so, so pretty. The nude palette. I've used this so much. It still looks brand new. Like literally, it looks like I've barely tapped into these, but they're just really nice and pigmented. So all you have to do is just Tap your brush in and you've got pigment. There is a little concealer base. I honestly haven't used that a lot if I'm being 100% honest, but the shadows, the glitters, they're just stunning. This palette I took with me to New York in April, so you know I've used it for a big majority of the... I was rudely interrupted by my camera, so I don't know where I left off. I do love Jeffree Star's eyeshadow formula, and just in general, I mean, honestly, it could be any palette, just depending on what colors you like. I really enjoyed the Alien palette. I like this one because you do get a lot of very wearable neutrals, and then you get a lot of very different colors as well, whether it be a good neutral or a bright neon. The quality is really, really good. I can always come up with a fun look, and they're easy to use shadows too so if you're thinking about investing in the palettes and you're not sure is it worth it is it not I absolutely love them and I did pick up the blue blood palette because I loved blood sugar so much 
I think it was in last year's favorite, but I love Blood Sugar. The Alien palette, I actually think I have now all of the palettes. The Shane palette is beautiful. There's so many good shadows, so if you're thinking about it and you just don't know if they're quite good, I say go for it, give it a try. I think the quality is amazing. Speaking of amazing quality, Natasha Denon shadows are so good. They are incredibly expensive. I will give you that. This is the Safari palette in the all matte. I've seen this one go on sale, but when I first bought it, I think it was one of their $129 palettes. The pigmentation of this one is absolutely stunning. I love the mattes. For me, the mattes from Natasha Denona are what really, really get me and blow me away. I think they are positively stunning. They're pigmented, but they're not dusty. You don't get a lot of fallout from them. They're just such such good quality. There are still palettes of hers that I really want. Hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe in my lucky bag this year, we'll get one amazing, amazing quality. If you want to splurge a little bit, if you don't want to splurge, my next recommendations are for you. I had to throw in affordable eyeshadows that I really, really love because I do think, especially with eyeshadows, there's a lot of opportunity out there to get really good quality at an affordable price. So first off, I have to say, I love my ColourPop shadows, my ColourPop palettes. I recently just ordered a couple more. I think that for the price, they are some of the best eyeshadows out there. I almost never find true drugstore eyeshadows that I actually like. It's almost unheard heard of for me that I go to the drugstore, use an eyeshadow, and actually like it. That's just kind of how it is. I feel like the drugstore qualities like CoverGirl, oh my god, the complexion, mascara, so many things that they're doing are so amazing. But when it comes to brands like CoverGirl, Maybelline, Rimmel, um, you know, a laundry list of things, the eyeshadows usually don't impress me. But you can get ColourPop shadow palettes for around $12, sometimes even on sale, and are really stunning. I don't think you can beat it for the price. The Femme Rosa was one that I grabbed for so, so many times throughout the year. I really enjoyed I Think I Love You. This is a beautiful neutral one. You get a lot of really pretty shimmers. Such an easy palette to work with, but I could go on and on. I have so many palettes of theirs that I love. The BH Cosmetics blows me away. When you pick up their eyeshadows, you're like, wow, this is only like 20 bucks. Are you serious? The Festival palette was one of those that really got me. This has a lot of really bright, fun colors, but they have other palettes that are stunning as well. There's a few that I really enjoyed throughout the year. Oh, if you're looking for some bright, really fun and different colors, like this is perfect for summer or just when you want to experiment and play with makeup and you want to wear something different. The quality is insane. Like I just swatched that over something else, but look at those. I'm so impressed with the BH quality. It's so, so good. Morphe palettes are not always something that I reach for. I'm gonna be 100% honest, like some of my older palettes that are Morphe, I just don't even like anymore. I don't think that the quality was always there, but man, when they do it right, they really do it right. This is the Morphe 39A Dare to Create palette. I believe this is the one that, that was like a limited edition and they brought it back because so many people enjoyed it so much. But I just want to talk about some of their recent quality and I got one for Christmas I'm really excited to use. But this one is a stunning palette. It's definitely more on the rich deep side. I love that they did that though because anyone of any skin tone can use this and it'll still show up and look beautiful. But the quality of these shadows is so, so good. You've got so many options. Dare to Create is the perfect name because you have so, so many good colors in this palette. And finally, I want to talk about lip products. So I have a few different things I want to tell you about. When it comes to liquid lipstick formulas, I have been reaching for a few specific ones throughout the year. Huda, again, does it with the liquid lipsticks. I cannot deny it. The formula is really, really good. They are thin, very comfortable on the lips, and they wear beautifully too. I also have to say, Jeffree Star Cosmetics still has, in my opinion, one of the best liquid lipstick formulas out there. The color range is very nice, and again, these wear very comfortably throughout the day. What I have on right now is Ofra Long Lasting Liquid Lipstick. I have on the shade Pasadena, which I really like. Ofra has some beautiful shades. I also really love the component of this one. For whatever reason, I'm really drawn to it. A couple lip liners I want to tell you guys about. I have really been digging these Smashbox Always Sharp Lip Liners. I have a red and crimson, and I also have Safe Word. Safe Word is probably the one that I have reached for more than anything else throughout the year. I 
I've worn it a lot. It's a very good neutral. It's a little bit warm, but not too warm, not too pink. It's like just a good, good neutral that you can use with a lot of things. And then you can't go wrong with a good red. So I've used this red to line my lips for obviously a red lip or even something that is maybe like a reddish pink or a reddish orange something in that family to give a little bit of an ombre effect but when you twist these closed they actually twist into the cap and make it sharp again and that way you can really get a lot of precision especially around like the slope of my lip right here for whatever reason I have trouble getting that perfectly smooth and this is like a nice fine point there are other formulas that I love as well but these really stood out to me as like what I've been reaching for the most. For bullet lipsticks, I have two recommendations. Obviously, we already talked about MAC lipsticks. I think that kind of goes without saying. MAC lipsticks are amazing. They have so many finishes and so many colors, collections, and the powder matte. Oh, I almost forgot to talk about those. Those are amazing as well. But the two that I really reached for a lot throughout the year are first off the CoverGirl. I got this PR kit with all their lip colors and they're so stunning. I wear a lot of these shades and I kept a bunch of them, but I have Caramel Kiss is one of my favorites that I've reached for a lot. I love to put on Safe Word, the lip liner, and then do Caramel Kiss or sometimes I will use Honeyed Bloom. These are two shades that I really, really like. These give you that like perfect pout type of a look. So Honey Bloom is a little bit pinker and then Caramel Kiss is a little bit more warm. This combination of lip always gives me that like plump pouty look that I want. And you know, no matter what I use, I always go back to these. So Safe Word in the middle can really go with either, but I will line with Safe Word and kind of fill in just a little bit as well. Put one of those colors in the center, depending on if I want it a little bit more pink or a little bit more warm. And it's like juicy pouty lips. Ooh. I love it. And then one that recently came into my life that I've really been loving is the Melt Lipstick Formula. So I have the shade Old Rose. This is the shade Old Rose. The formula is so beautiful. It's matte, but very, very comfortable. I've worn this several times and I have so many lips. Like I could pick a different color every single day, but I love this Melt Formula. So I just wanted to quickly throw that in there. And finally, the last item. I wanna quickly mention that I'm still in love with my Tarte H2O glosses. I have several different shades, but two that I wear consistently are Hang 10, which is like a more nudie pink. And then I also have Pink Sands, which is a newer one. I probably got this one a few months ago as well, but in general, I just wanted to say this formula is really bomb. They're a little bit like sticky and tacky, but I feel like if you want your gloss to last, it kinda of needs to be a a little sticky and tacky and I don't mind it with these because they feel hydrating I don't get like my hair stuck in them they're not that sticky but they have a little bit of like grip to them I feel like they stay on my lips really well let me just show you the formula is so pretty a great pair is just lining the lips and then going in with a little bit of these glosses because they are pigmented enough to really wear on their own or wear with a lip liner or over top of lipstick I really really love the formula though those are all of my favorites for the year if you have any questions anything that I left out that you're like okay what's your favorite this and that maybe I didn't cover a type of makeup that you're interested in or if you have questions about any of these products let me know and I will try to answer all of your questions but that is it for now. There will be a second video telling you guys some product fails of the year. And it's only going to be the worst of the worst. What really stood out to me, what really didn't work. Not things that I'm hot and cold on, but things that I really, truly hated during the year. Ooh, that's a strong word, but sometimes things just don't work and you hate it. You hate the experience. So be on the lookout for that. That will be my next video. And I hope you guys enjoyed seeing all of these products. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell and you'll be notified of all of my uploads. Thank you guys again. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.